now how, again, how well do you know a song? Like, can you read a chart um, and get through it? Do you have it, like, what level do you have it memorized, you know? Um, how well do you know the chords? You know what I mean? I mean, there's some of these tunes, and this is why I really think that this idea of workshopping things is not just something for this camp or for a set amount of time or your schoolwork or whatever. Um, being a musician is really, it's a lifelong process. You know, it, I hope it doesn't end here. Even if you don't end up being a full-time professional musician, you make all your money from gigs, it's still a lifetime pursuit, you know. Uh, so you always want to be growing, you know. And uh, so the idea of how well you know a tune, let's say that you pick you pick a song, like record a minute or something, and so you practice that for a whole year. Or you play it on a regular basis for a whole year. And so by the end of that year, you're like, okay, I think I really know this tune. You know what I mean? But you're only 22 years old. You know? I'm 42 years old. I've been playing that song for, you know, as long as you've been alive. So there is a different, that's a different level, and that's something that is hard to relate to as students. You know what I mean? Because you're sort of just thinking, okay, I'm, I want to get through my juries, I'm trying to graduate, I want to sit in at the jam session, whatever, you know what I mean? But if you look at it in, that, in those terms, like these are really all long-term goals. If you look at music as a lifetime pursuit, um, I don't know, I think it takes a little bit of the pressure off, don't you? No? It adds pressure? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, I don't think so. What do you think, Daryl? I mean, I mean, and Daryl's, uh, he's like two years older than me. <laughs> <laughs> two and eight. I mean, because if you, you know, I mean, like, I suppose anything, like, the, you know, if you've been doing it, again, some of you, you'll go to college for four years, you know. But like I said, I've been playing some of these tunes for 20 years, you know. And then there's people who've been playing for 30 years, 40 years, you know what I mean? And that's why a lot of these tunes, um, you know, what we would call standards, whether they be Tin Pan Alley tunes or sort of like the jazz tunes, jazz standards, you know, they keep getting played because these are structures that people can really kind of grow with, you know. I mean, I hope that I play record uh Obviously, there's certain things that I like stylistically that I tend to go for, but I hope that if you took a tape of me playing record in 1990 and you took a tape of me playing now, um, that it would just be more developed, you know what I mean? Uh, more mature, uh, that sort of thing. Are you following me thus far? Mm -hmm. okay. So, here's our list for the time being. Uh, how to approach the shed repertoire, or any tune you want to learn. The first thing, and Daryl alluded to this earlier, is to listen to the original recording. You know? um, now, I did want to say that just to compare, like for myself, like if I was given a packet like this, um, now a lot of my experiences have been uh, getting music at the last minute, uh, music that I don't know, and music that has to be performed maybe on a record date in 10 minutes or at a gig that night or so forth, you know. So you may not have time to listen to a recording. So uh, if that's the case, then we got to talk about sight reading. Let's, let's come back to that. So, um, in terms of listening to an original recording, let's see if I can... Uh, I know it's on YouTube. 